start, I want to start with a basic sort of um, very much cursory overview so that people can perhaps grasp some kind of context here and then we can progressively delve deeper into said rabbit hole um, as, as we go along. So in the first instance, the drug class known as the HMG coenzyme A reductase inhibitors, statins in other words, are a drug which blocks the function of a specific enzyme in our metabolic pathway. And the downstream effect of the blockade of that enzyme is that our bodies are less able, less effective at biosynthesizing and creating our own cholesterol. So the first thing we need to do is go and look in a biochemistry textbook, any biochemistry textbook you like that's peer reviewed, and you will find one and only one form of the molecule cholesterol. It is a high molecular weight alcohol. It is a waxy um, sort, of a, sort of a substance. It is not a fat. It is a lipid by virtue of not being uh, dissolvable directly in water. Um, and as such, it will not dissolve in the blood plasma and therefore needs to be transported around the body by a class of lipoproteins, as it turns out. Uh, and they come in various different forms, ranging from chylene microns through to very low density lipoproteins. So you have a high density lipoprotein, you have an intermediate density lipoprotein, you have low density lipoproteins, which are split into subcategories as well. Largely the thing that determines what class of transporter molecules we've got is the particular protein that is embedded in the membrane of these transporters and also the various ratios of lipids to, um, to proteins, in other words, the density of these particular things. So these transporters are packets. They are spheroid, spheroid shape. They're kind of, they're a, they're a phospholipid bilayer in which the lipids are contained inside and the, the, um, the packets float around in the blood because they have their hydrophilic ends pointing outwards, basically. So that's, that's basically how that works. That's how we transport cholesterol around in our body. That said, the first thing that comes to mind when you think about cholesterol is that cholesterol is synthesized in your body by your body under instruction from your genes. Those genes having survived at least 3,800 million years of evolution on this planet. And as it turns out, probably um, a lot longer than that, having been potentially delivered to this planet from elsewhere via a process that they are proposing is called transpermia, where bits of um, instructions of DNA and stuff are delivered from planet to planet on rocks that have been floating around in space and things, and then they crash. And anyway, that's for another day. So let's say let's say that life developed in the first instance on this planet. Let's forget transpermia. So there's at least 3,800 million years of evolution that these particular genes have survived. They have been selectively, positively uh, reinforced while other genes have been wiped out for various different reasons. So there is a reason that our body creates cholesterol. As it turns out, around about 80% of the cholesterol floating around in your blood at any given time was created by your body and, and not taken in in the diet in any way, shape or form. So 
cholesterol is, and I'll get to the diagrams that show you this in a minute, but cholesterol is actually made from all the food that you eat, actually. Carbohydrates, fats, proteins, they all can be used to actually biosynthesize cholesterol in your body. So there you go, 80% of the cholesterol in your blood is made by your body under the instructions of your genes. Those genes, knowing pretty well what they're doing actually, having been around for a very, very long time doing just that. So, so the on. other 20%? Where does that the other from? 20% is thought to be dietary. It's sort to be taken in the diet. So uh, you're saying that we could potentially change our cholesterol levels with up to 20% by changing our diet? Well, you would think that that might be a logical progression to make, Pim, but it actually isn't because the amount of cholesterol in your blood at any given time is set by the action of your genes, and your genes can be turned on and off like a light switch. There are homeostatic mechanisms that say, right now, my body is in state X, Y, or Z. My body finds itself in a particular environment. Therefore, the level of cholesterol I need in my blood right now is X, Y, or Z. If your cholesterol level in your blood is too high, then what happens is there is a transporter that transports that cholesterol out of your blood, back into your bowel, and then you excrete it in the feces. So my cholesterol is too high. Nonsense. You have a transporter that when your body in its infinite wisdom decides you have too much cholesterol, will simply crap it out the back end. Okay. If your cholesterol level is too low because you haven't eaten enough cholesterol, for example, I'm going to reduce my cholesterol by 20% by not eating anything containing cholesterol, then that gene will be upregulated to counteract the change that you are trying to make. Because believe it or not, your body actually knows what it needs better than you do, and much better than any person in a white coat that's had about 10 years of training on such a thing. Your genes have had 3,800 million years of training. That's a lot more than 10. Uh, and they're not told what to think by boards of control that sell very, very dangerous drugs for money. So the whole the whole idea that we should interfere at all, actually, in our cholesterol metabolism is completely contraindicated from the ground up. There was never any scientific support for the whole idea anyway. So why are we being told that we need to reduce our cholesterol and cholesterol is bad, etc., etc., etc.? Well, because there were a group of researchers who were looking into the development of atherosclerosis heart disease, and those researchers found an association between a certain subclass actually as it turns out of the lipoproteins and the development of atherosclerosis so the lipoprotein is remember that's the carrier molecule that's not even cholesterol and so how they've decided to react to that is here is an opportunity as a money-making entity as a drug company to produce a drug that reduces cholesterol it doesn't necessarily directly well it necessarily does not directly affect the level of the lipoproteins even there is not one single researcher medic or or anybody else in the know anywhere in the world who is claiming that cholesterol causes heart disease the claim is that the various different carriers of cholesterol can be problematic and as it turns out, this is only remotely true when you take into consideration that said lipoprotein carriers have to be chemically deranged before the body will react to them in such a way as to cause you to develop atherosclerosis heart disease. Now, those chemical derangements come in the form of oxidation and glycation are the two most important ones. So if you're if a particular subclass of your LDL molecules become oxidized, then your body can react to those as 
if they were an invading pathogen, there can be an immune cascade and that leads to atherosclerosis heart disease. The same is true if those LDL, subclass of LDL becomes glycated, meaning it gets, it gets damaged by sugar. A native LDL molecule will not be reacted to by your body, will not, cannot cause heart disease. So heart disease is not caused by cholesterol at all. Neither is it caused by native LDL. It is caused by derangements to your LDL. As such, to mitigate, to ameliorate, to prevent heart disease, we need to prevent the oxidation and glycation of our LDL. We don't need to pre prevent the LDL existing. It exists for a purpose. The purpose it exists for is to deliver cholesterol to the epithelial cells largely. Okay, why do epithelial cells need cholesterol? Well, epithelial cells, like every other cell in your body, have cell membranes around them, which is a phospholipid bilayer. Embedded in that phospholipid bilayer are a bunch of different things, including molecular cholesterol. What is the role of cholesterol there? It is to provide structural integrity for those cells. If you don't have enough cholesterol to maintain the integrity of those cell walls, those cells split open, they break, the contents leak out, those cells basically die. And if your cholesterol level is low enough, you're gonna die too, and, and pretty quickly actually. Um, so that's kind of the, the overriding position statement. So if we have cells that are deficient in cholesterol before the cells are actually breaking etc what could happen before that because otherwise we would just pretty much die instantly wouldn't we yeah yeah so there, there are a progression there are a lot of signs and symptoms that your body is deficient in cholesterol and the the various things that will show up depend on exactly what the situation is in your particular body the example I gave you of the role of cholesterol there in the cell membranes in terms of structural integrity, that's actually just one of literally hundreds and hundreds of different purposes that or roles that cholesterol serves in the human body. Okay.